covered a lot of information about right triangles, so I'm going to go a little bit quick. Feel free to rewind, pause me, whatever you need to do. Um, but first, we're going to look at uh, similarity within right triangles. Now, when we had gone over this in class, we noticed that um, whenever an altitude is drawn from the right angle of a right triangle, it actually creates three similar right triangles. So I'm going to drag them out so you can see what those three are. We have in the small one, uh, out of the whole triangle altogether, I have this triangle, the smallest one, I have this triangle, and then the medium sized one, I have this triangle. Now, as they are labeled here, they are color, color, color coded with uh, corresponding sides um, in matching color. So this small blue side is proportional to this small blue side. This hypotenuse is proportional to this hypotenuse. And I basically have five segments that I'll use to set up proportions inside of these three similar right triangles. I have what I'll call leg one. The segment which corresponds to that, which is on the same side of its altitude, I'll call segment one. I have this leg, the second leg, leg two. This is its corresponding segment, segment two. I have the altitude itself, and then this entire segment, segment one plus segment two, I'll call the hypotenuse. So I'm going to sum up the proportions that come out of these three similar figures with the following diagram. Um, so notice this is the same diagram, it's just it's slightly larger on this side. Here's leg one, segment one, leg two, segment two, the entire hypotenuse, and the altitude. Well, the altitude turns out to be the geometric mean between the segments of the hypotenuse. What that means is a proportion I can set up using the altitude uh, would involve also the two segments of the hypotenuse. So I'll put segment one here and segment two here. Notice with properties of proportions, I can interchange the segment one and the segment two, and the proportion would still be correct. So that is one proportion I can use to set this up. Uh, the leg is the geometric mean between the whole, the whole hypotenuse, which is the entire length of this whole segment, hypotenuse, and its corresponding segment. So since I'm dealing with leg one here, its corresponding segment to leg one would be segment one. So leg one over segment one equals the hypotenuse over leg two. Similarly for leg two, it's leg two over segment two is equal to the hypotenuse over leg two. So let's use some of these proportions in examples and see how this works out. So let's look at the first one here. I'm going to get out my pen. Um, here, let's first solve for the altitude. Well, looking back at these examples, the altitude will go in these two positions of my proportion. So I'm going to set up my altitude, which in this case is x, into those positions of the proportion, x and x, and is the geometric mean between the two segments, okay? So the two segment one and segment two are the two parts of the hypotenuse which that altitude is cutting. So those two parts are this part and this part, so this will be x over two equals eight over x, and when I do some cross multiplication, I get that x squared equals 16, which means that x is 4. Normally when you take square roots it's plus or minus, but since x is representing a length, it cannot be a negative value. So that is one proportion I can use to solve this. The next one I'm going to use is to find my leg y. So my leg is the geometric mean between the whole hypotenuse, which would be 2 plus 8, which is 10, and its corresponding segment, which is 2. So in this case, I cross multiply, y squared would equal 2 times 10, which is 20, which means when I take square roots, y will be 2 square root of 5. Again, I knew how to set up that proportion because from my theorems here, a leg is the geometric mean, so the leg is here and here, uh, between its corresponding segment and the whole hypotenuse. So here's my leg, y, goes in these two positions. Its corresponding segment is 2, and the entire hypotenuse is 10. You can also, um, instead of using these formulas, you can set up proportions by identifying how the similarity corresponds to these similar triangles. Okay. Okay, looking at number two now. Um, again, I'm going to go through this. I have uh, first B, which is my altitude. So the altitude is the geometric mean between the two segments, so that'll be 5 and A. Well, I have a problem here because I don't know what A is yet. So I know that B squared will equal 5A, but I don't yet know A. So let's see if we can find what A is. The only other piece I have here is this leg. Well, I know that that leg is the geometric mean, 
so it'd be in these two positions, between the um, corresponding segment, which is A, and the whole hypotenuse. Well, this whole hypotenuse is A plus 5. So when I do this, I'll end up with a, when I cross multiply, A squared plus 5A equals 36, which means that A squared plus 5A minus 36 equals 0. I can try to factor this. Factors to A plus 9, A minus 4. It's 9 and negative 4 multiply to negative 36 and add to positive 5, which tells me that either A equals negative 9 or A is equal to 4. But since A represents the length of a segment, lengths cannot be negative, I reject this answer and A is 4. So now I know A is 4. I can go up here and plug that value in and continue to solve. So I know that B squared would be 4 times 5, which is 20. So that B is 2 square root of 5. Okay, so I got my two answers. Okay. With that in mind, I'd like you to try 3 and 4 on your own. We will go over those two questions tomorrow in class. Moving on to Pythagorean theorem. By now, everyone should be familiar with the Pythagorean theorem. Given a right triangle with legs A and B and hypotenuse C, the sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Uh, we also have some special right triangles that we had looked at. Um, this one of 30, 60, 90, we noticed that the ratio of its sides were in a special pattern. For the 30, 60, 90 special right triangle, the sides were in a ratio of 1 to the square root of 3 to 2. So the side opposite 30 um, to the side opposite 60 is in a 1 to rad 3 ratio. The other special right triangle we had was a 45-45-90. It's also called the isosceles right triangle because since those base angles are congruent, this will be an isosceles triangle. So the 45-45-90. 90 right triangles in a 1 to 1 to red 2 ratio. So let's use the Pythagorean theorem and the special right triangle properties in some examples. First, the perimeter of a rhombus is 24 and one of its diagonals is 8. Find the length of the other diagonal. Well, since I'm talking about the diagonals, I'm going to draw them in. Now I'm going to label some of my given information. First off, I know that the perimeter of my rhombus is 24. Well, since a rhombus has four sides and each side is equal, if I divide this 24 by 4, I should get the measure of each side, which gives me 6. So I know this rhombus has four congruent sides, each with a measure of 6. Each with a measure, excuse me, of 6. Uh, one of its diagonals is 8. So let's say this one here is 8. Well, since the diagonal of the rhombus is a parallelogram, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other, each half of that will be 4. So then my goal is to find the length of the other diagonal. We'll also recall that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So this actually forms a right triangle. So I'm going to call this piece of it x. So I have that x squared plus 4 squared equals 6 squared, which means that x squared plus 16 equals 36, or simply that x squared is equal to 20, so that x would be 2 square root of 5. 2 square root of 5 is very popular today. Well, that's just x. I'm looking for the diagonal, and x here was representing only half that total length, so that means that the other diagonal would have to be double that, which is 4 square root of 5. So that's the length of my other diagonal. Scrolling down to the next question, find the height of an isosceles trapezoid, each of whose legs has length 12 and whose base has length 20 and 24. Well, I'm trying to find the height, so I'm going to draw in the height on both sides of this trapezoid. Now, we recently went over this when we did surface area and volume, um, but I'm going to write in the given information. I know my bases have length 20 and 24. 20 would obviously be the shorter of the two. And the bottom one's 24. The entire length of that base is 24. Well, if these are both altitudes, this would form a rectangle, which means if this length is 20, this length is also 20. Since the total length is 24, that leaves me with four more to be distributed. And since each side is 12, this is an isosceles trapezoid, 
these two lengths will have to be congruent to each other. So 20 minus 24, at least me with 2 and 2 to be distributed evenly. So 2 plus 20 plus 2 does give me the total length, which is 24. And if I want this height, call it x, I can use, again, Pythagorean theorem to figure that out. 2 squared plus x squared would equal 12 squared. So this is 144 and this is 4, so x squared would equal 140 which when I take square roots and simplify out my radical, uh, 140 is 7 times 20, so this will be 2 square root of 35. Okay, scrolling down. The perimeter of an equilateral triangle is 24. Find its height. Well, I'm going to draw in its height. Keep in mind that a height is, again, just another name for an altitude. So it will meet at right angles. And with that information, since it's an equilateral triangle and its perimeter is 24, I want you to try to figure out what this height is going to be. Keep in mind, uh, you might want to use special right triangle pro uh, properties for this question. We will go over it in class. The other type of right triangle information that you should be aware of is trigonometry. Now remember, the Sokotoa stuff was an abbreviation for when we have um, a triangle, a right triangle in particular. So the triangle needs to be a right triangle. And I have an angle in here, so I'm going to write in an angle measurement. So let's say this angle, which I'll call theta. It looks like a zero, but it's a theta. I'm going to draw it bigger here. So angles, an angle abbreviation variable would be theta, like this. Um, this side is opposite it. This side is adjacent to it. And this is the hypotenuse. So we can uh, set up these trig ratios. Sine of this angle theta would be equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. For cosine, it's the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So with these trig values, sine, cosine, and tangent are always followed by an angle measure. So in this case, that's that theta. If you have a side and an acute angle, you should be able to find another side. So what that means is um, the following. So here I have a side and an acute angle. So I need to find all of the missing sides. So first off, I'm going to label these two sides with some variables. I'm going to call this x. I'm going to call this y. I'm going to solve for those two sides. So given this angle, I know that sine of this angle would equal y over 18. So sine of this angle measurement, which is 42 degrees, would equal the opposite side, which is y, over the hypotenuse, which is 18. This tells me that y would be 18 sine of 42. So you could take out a handy dandy calculator and do that calculation. Be sure to turn it on. Uh, escape here. Okay. So I'm going to type in 18 sine of 42 and then hit enter. Now, one tip to make sure your calculation is correct. You need to make sure that your mode is set to degrees. Because if you are set to radians, your value will be incorrect. So make sure you're in degree mode so that your calculator recognizes this is 42 degrees. So 12.044, I'm going to round to the nearest tenth, which in this case would be zero. So I have my value for y is 12.0. I could repeat the same process for x. Since x is the adjacent side, it is adjacent to this angle. Adjacent meaning touching it. I'm going to use cosine, ka, adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of this 42 degrees will be equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which means that x will be 18 cosine of 42. Again, I'm going to go back to my calculator, type in 1, 8 cosine 42 degrees, enter, and I got 13.37. Since 7 is greater than 5, this will round to 4, so 13.4 is my value for x. Okay. Um, what I'd like you to, tr well, let me do one more of these with you. Find all the missing sides. This is a slightly different situation given this angle. Um, I'm going to find the hypotenuse first. So I'm going to call this x and this y. 
I'm going to have you solve for y on your own in a minute, but uh, the reason I want to go through x with you is notice that since 18 is the adjacent side, I will use cosine again. This will be cosine of 32 degrees will equal the adjacent, which is 18, over the hypotenuse. Now, it's different from this situation because now the variable is in the denominator. So what I'm going to do is use the, um, um, uh, the means property, and I'm going to interchange these two values. So x will equal 18 divided by cosine of 32. If you had cross-multiplied and then divided, you'd end up with the same fraction. It just is a time saver. So I'm going to take out my calculator again. I'm going to type in 18 now divided by cosine of 32 degrees. Enter. 21.22. So 21.2 will be my answer. So I leave it to you to find the value for y. We can go over that in class tomorrow. Finally, uh, we have our inverse trig uh, information, which is using in reverse to find an angle. Um, another name for the inverse trig ratios are arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent. That's the same thing as saying sine inverse, cosine inverse, tan inverse. These inverse relationships are always followed by the ratio, and they give you back the angle. So this is a situation where you have two sides. You can always find an acute angle. So we'll go through one of these examples together. This one. So first, I'm going to note, identify what angle I'm trying to find, which will be x in this case. And then I have its opposite side and the hypotenuse. Well, what relates opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So sine of x, this angle x, would equal the opposite side, which is 2, over the hypotenuse, which is 12. So then if I want x, I have to undo what this sine is doing. So the inverse operation of sine is the sine inverse operation. So I'm going to do that. to both sides of this equation. Sine inverse and sine cancel each other out, leaving me with x. And I have x is the inverse sine of 2 twelfths. Again, I can use my calculator to do this. And notice that the inverse sine um, function is right above the sine function. So to do that, I'm going to hit the second key, and then sine, and it pulls up that inverse sine. And then I'll type 2 divided by 12. Notice that 2 twelfths does reduce to 1 sixth, so if you type in 1 sixth, you still get the same answer I'm about to get. I'll show that to you. Had you reduced it to 1 sixth, since that's an equivalent fraction, you do get the same number. So it's 9.6 uh, degrees is the value for sine. Uh, it's the value for x, excuse me. 9.6 degrees. Okay. So I'll leave it to you to do question two. If you have any questions about it, we can go over it in class tomorrow. And then the last bit of information is applied trig. Um, just recall that when I'm talking about angles of elevation and depression inside of these trig word problems, uh, these angles are always made with a horizontal reference line. So let's see how that boils down. An angle of elevation of the top of a building from a point on the ground 50 meters from the base is 65 degrees. How tall is the building? So let's draw a diagram to represent the situation. Here's a building in the ground. I have a point, which is 50 meters from the base of the building. So that's 50 meters. Okay. I'm measuring uh, from the base of the building to the top of the building. 65 degrees, and I need to find the height of the building, which would be h. Well, h is the opposite side. This is my adjacent side, so I'm going to use my tangent ratio. 10 of 65 degrees is equal to uh, opposite, which is h, over adjacent, which is 50. Toa, soka, toa, opposite over adjacent. I can then solve for h by multiplying both sides by 50, so 50, 10, of 65. Again, I'll go back to my calculator. I'll type in 50 tangent of 65 degrees, and I get 107.2 meters. So my height of the building is 107.2 meters. Okay. Similar process for angle of depression. 
the angle of depression from a plane to a point on the ground is 72 degrees. If the plane's altitude is two miles, how far must it travel until it's directly above this point that it saw on the ground? So I'm going to draw a plane. I'm going to draw the ground. I'm going to label some of my given information. I'm first getting out a pen. Okay. Um, let me do... Okay. So I know that from this plane to the ground, two miles. Okay. The angle of depression from the plane, so the plane is my point of reference, to the ground is 72 degrees. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line coming out of this plane. That's the horizontal reference line. So this plane is looking down at an angle of depression of 72 degrees. So it's looking down at some point on the ground this way. And the angle that I'm measuring is done from the plane's horizontal reference line here down to its point of view. So this is my 72 degrees in this case. Well, since these lines are parallel, this line of sight is parallel to the ground, and these are alternate interior angles, this is also 72 degrees. And I, my question was asked, how far must it travel until it's directly above this point? Well, that would be this distance. So I'll call that x. So interpreting this question is pretty much half the battle. Because now I see that I have the opposite and the adjacent side. So again, I will use the tangent ratio. So tan of 72 degrees equals opposite, which is 2, over x. I'm going to use that um, means uh, the extremes property again. So this is x is 2 over tan of 72 degrees. Go back to my calculator. 2 divided by tangent of 72 degrees is 0.649. Okay. So 0.649, that is uh, my value for x, 0.65, that would round to, miles. Hey, Macklemore, can we go thrift shopping?